So let's look at subd modeling. We're going to look at the tools that we've modified and updated for subd modeling. First thing that we, we come across is the option that a lot of people were asking for when we, we rolled out 2020. We didn't, they didn't want to have the box mode across all of the geometry. Box mode works on subds and also on NURBS. And so we now have this option to just have it turned on for subd bodies only. We'll look at that in a second. We also added some options into the align, align to curve as well, because the align to curve had a closest option, but we wanted to control the parameterization of the um, result as well within the tool. So we added in parametric, parametric and also art length based. We also have the start and end options to allow us to control, to control those as well. So let's go have a look. So box mode. If I turn box mode on in this model, you can see that we only shade the subdiv model, this front uh, front um, part of the car. If I look down, I can see subdivision is on only. I can, if I want, choose subd only off, which then um, turns box mode onto the NURBS as well. So that means we can turn them on and off. So let's move on to look at some of the align to curve options. We go into subdivision surfacing and we go down to subdiv align to curve look at the option box closest was the, the only options we had for alignment initially now we've had a uniform alignment on parametric base or an art length based so let's have a look at those before we do i just want to explain um, parameters and show you just talk about the parameters a little bit before we um, explain it so if I go and put on a um, construction point onto here or a point curve point, when I move along here, you can see in the top prompt line that the U is at 0.5. So it's halfway along this curve. Move it down here, it's zero. Move it up here, it's one. And that's how long the curve is and how it works. However, when you've moved a point on a curve, that changes. So I'd expect it to be somewhere here, but it's 60 points, whatever. However, if I move it along here, I can get it to 0.5. But that means I'm going to get a different distribution of points when I move and place things. And that's really what we're talking about here. I'm going to take these different examples and show you how that works with the, the, new, the new options and tools in um, Align to Curve. First of all, this is closest. This is the default behavior when I say Align to Curve and I pick a curve to align to. And you can see it's not desirable because the points are crossing over. I've got points placed on top of each other. And no matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to fix that even using the start and end, the new start and end controls. So let's go in and change the, the uniform options. Let's just deselect that one before I align it and align to curve. Here you see we're using the parametric, the parametric um, control to align that. So it's laying out the points along the curve, which is a little better, but still not ideal. Again, we can control that within here, um, working with the, the start and end position from within the interface or within the, the control. However, it might be in this case, we don't want either of those options. So I say align to curve, I say uniform, and I pick this curve. Now it is parametric and I can say arc length. And I've just realized that I actually totally missed this, got this wrong, it should be uniform, parametric which also gives us a better result. That was the exact same result as we had before. So you can see there's a slight difference between the layout based on the parametric or arc length. So this is subdivided evenly. This is working based on the parametric value as it goes along the curve. So those are some nice options for align to curve. Let's take a look at extrude. Let's quickly just pop back to um, the different. So let's pop back quickly to extrude and have a look at what's what we've changed. We can now use multi-degree curves for extrusion. It was something that was added in a point release, but we want to really highlight it in 2021. So now we can use. We don't have to have faceted curves. We can have curves with multiple degrees to build off. We also have a new option in new pick type. So we can choose whether we've got 
surface edges or multi degree curves um, and whether we're building off surface edges um, or curves when we're working. And we've also added an option for uniform with curvature bias in uh, and parametric. So let's have a look at that. If I go in here and I subdiv extrude, open up the option box. So here you can see we've got the curve and surface edges option as well as edges, faces and all. So that means we can now selectively choose how we're going to pick things because when you've got a lot of geometry, you don't always want to build off um, a sub D face or edge. We sometimes want to pick the curve or the surface and we want to make sure we're picking the right thing to get the right results. So you don't end up with a sub D that's split in two sometimes as well. So let's just create a sub D extrusion on here and let's just pull it out. That looks all fine. I've got subdivisions in here so I can control how many subdivisions I'm going to have in there. Based on the number of subdivisions, we'll control the shape. And you can see here how it's contorting um, to actually maintain that shape. Let's just go back to parametric because this would be the default option that I would get um, previously. So I have to have something like six. I don't think we get there with five. It's just starting to pull away. Maybe go to six there. That's all fine, but maybe I'm still not pulling enough on those controls. So I want a uniform option with a curvature bias. Turn that off and it's uniform. Now, if I slide this this way, it starts to drag the CVs towards the, the um, corner to make it do the corner and get the exact result that I want. So I can keep pulling them down until I get somewhere to 0.5. And this is where we've got to be aware of what the tool's doing. It's trying to drag them to that point. And the algorithm that we're using, sometimes in certain situations, this one particularly, you see, when I drag it to one, it controls, it convolutes and twists all the surfaces. So we need to be able to just bring it back to be able to get the right alignment or the layout that we want. So those are the new options in Extrude, allowing us to really control as we build surfaces, all of the options that we want um, to get the right extrusion and the layout of surfaces from the start. So next look, next let's look at the sub D retopology tool or retopo tool as you can see in the interface. This is a new tool or group of tools, probably 11 or 12 tools that go together to really um, enable you to work with scan data, fitting surfaces quickly and easily. And they have a lot of unique elements to them to work with them. So let's have a look at the retopo tool. Here we've got a scan, we've got a surface that's fitted. I'm just going to use that initially to explain how the tool works. So let's bring up the Retopo toolbox. And when I'm working with this, you can see it's already live because I've invoked the history from one that we'd already created. And I'm just going to use it to explain a few of the options. So first of all, how do I start to create geometry? Well, if it was a blank surface, I would just put points down, press shift, and then when I get this, the, the surface I want, I just click on there and accept it. Or I could go in and I could use the same tool with shift and left mouse button and extrude off that edge. Now they're split into two because I was picking off a, a different edge, but I can quickly go in and manipulate these points from within tool. It highlights, I can pick the edge or I can pick the point and then I move it close to it and it snaps based on that tolerance. It will then weld it together and then I can further refine that if I want. In here we can create faces, extend edges as we've done and insert edges. So if I press shift again, now it gives me the options to insert rows in the different directions. That gets inserted and then I can again manipulate and modify them. And bear in mind this is all happening within the surface space so the points of the sub D are fitted to the surface space. If I want I could take that whole loop and press in the middle of the mouse button then I extend all of that loop in one. Okay. So instead of just an edge I can do a whole loop at the same time. I can also delete a loop by pressing Control and the middle mouse button. I can also delete an edge by clicking Control and the left mouse button. All tools down here that I'm using. I can go in and I can say, well, let's delete that one. Oops, I inserted by accident. You're wrong Control, you're wrong key, Control it. You can see it's very clear with red. And then I can actually use the right mouse button to start to relax 
this based on this relaxation strength okay and that means I can start to just fine tune and adjust some of these points and relax them so let's go on to the windscreen and maybe start to lay something out um, on here I'm going to deselect first of all I'm going to say I'm going to go into the retopo tool just as clean brings the option window up first thing it's going to do is say pick the scan that you want say accept accept with spacebar in my case I could pick an existing um, sub D that I want to apply to it but I haven't got one so I'm going to say okay and now I'm live I can start laying out points onto the surface and press shift put my first point in and maybe now I'm just going to extrude off that to get my baseline in um, up the center line so I'm somewhere near the, the roof then I'm going to put middle mouse button and the shift control to just create this line and I really want to do this modifications in as few points as possible so I'm just going to work down here and that one was a little array 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 then I'm going to shift middle mouse button again put in another row modify them tweak that bit down probably that one as well and actually that one because I should have done it in the first place and again extrude middle mouse button positioning those because I'm going to get them better and then just pick this row and move it here I'm trying to pick the control that gives me the the easiest placement it still needs a little work but relax it and you can see you can actually improve its layout quite nicely um, obviously I just need to tweak that one because it's gone a bit too far and probably that one too now this is on this on the scan all the point all the time the points are so what does pers persistent projection do well if I turn it off then I come out of the tool and I say well I'm going to move these points away I'm going to move them up and maybe a bit out so it's fairly clear that they're not sitting on the surface anymore they're sticking out the tool still has history but I just turned off an option so it means that I can go back in with the history pick up this tool and I could say well actually no that wasn't what I wanted um, I want persistent projection back on every time now when I touch that point that has been put back onto the geometry but this one wasn't because I didn't touch it why have we done that well let's turn persistent projection off again and pick these two objects turn on the sections I don't need the curvature control just the sections and you can see here I can clearly see the differences between the two surfaces one is the sub D in green one is the white is the, is the scan and so now I can go in and modify these points uh, and pull them out I need to move that one back down it's not an ideal scenario for certain um, and I can just modify and control these points and start to eyeball in that surface onto there by moving it I'd be using my transform tools I'm just using um, the, the transform tool that's on the marking menu at the minute but I'd use my transform CV to get a nice alignment but that means that then I can control get the surface layout nice and then start to pull and push the points out to make it so it does actually surface 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 to surface fit not just the, with the retopo tool so there's a couple of other things I want to look at so I'm going to turn off persistent projection um, I don't mind if it snaps I'm going to turn off um, the clear that out of the way so now maybe I've been working on this and I want to carry on so I go in I pick the retopo tool and now there's another option we haven't looked at which is cut so I can use the control key whoops I can use the control sorry control and alt key to cut a new line in in a specific direction for whatever reason if it was the bonnet I might be wanting to put a line in here goes all the way around there so I can do a quick pull of all of those edges that edge loop and just lift it up and add a feature in. probably should have done this on the bonnet but um, you get the idea now it's trying to hang on in there because what I didn't do was turn off persistent projection so if I go into the edge loop again pick that edge loop now I'll be able to just transform that move it up 
let's adjust the manipulator as well onto that sub D. So now it's orientated in the right direction. Go to back to transform and drag that out. So what I'm doing is I'm starting to add detailing. It doesn't work on a windscreen, but you get the idea. So that's um, a lot of the tools with Rotopo. Very powerful tool set, lots of different things in there that enable you to start doing reverse engineering scan detailing workflows. So a couple of other things in the um, the, the sub D menu, um, not specifically sub D, but something that really will help in the sub D world. So, uh, and look at my shelf. You can see here, I've got a number of different things for importing. And those imports will actually take me to the directory location for the Dynamo scripts. So I set them up before. So let's just go to sample files Dynamo, maybe let's just change it. And um, then we'll say cancel. I'll go back in here and I'll say file, import, middle mouse button, and then I can drag that to my shelf. And now when I pick it, it will take me to that location. Actually, I picked the wrong one, um, but it will hold the location of the import in. So now I can import in this example file for subdiv workflows. So a nice new addition to be able to drag and drop the import window file opening into your, your shelf and have multiple different locations that you can quickly go and get access to. So maybe you're working on different projects, the, the servers or, or so on. So let's now have a look at this new Dynamo script that we've been created. It's a Dynamo script that um, has been built so we can actually very quickly lay out the wheel arch body side of a car um, and start to get the basic um, topology that we need. So I'm going to go in and pick a vertex or pick a uh, CV actually. Let's just switch the modes. Pick that CV and I'm just going to start to move it. So I'm going to start to move in that direction. And now what's happening is it's starting up Dynamo in the background and it will make the movement and updates in a second. What's in this script? Well, all of these little text elements tell me what I can do. And so I can now move. So I'll just move that point again and you see it will be live because the Dynamo started up in the background and I can edit this. I can pick this, I can change the degree because this is what happens with this to three. It changes the degree of that surface builder. I can pick this curve and change it from single degree to degree four because I want more spans and elements in there and accept. I can pick this point and I can change the wheelbase. So it means it's a very quick capable enabler to help me just drive um, the initial setup of the sub D topology that I want to create. Now, as soon as I start to work with this, so if I go into sub D's, pick this and I start to go in and modify it. So I'm going to go and pick my edge loop and I'm going to say transform, I'm going to pull it out in this direction. As soon as I start to modify that, it's going to break the history with um, the dynamo tool. And so all of these connections won't work any longer, but at least I was able to get a very good start with this um, initially. So that kind of completes the sub D tools that we've been looking at. We're going to look at data management as the next one.